Hey everybody, Joe with Bumbling Acres here. Hope y'all are doing well. We've got some stormy weather coming through the Ohio Valley. Nothing major, should just be a couple storms and such, but uh, the company I work for, I work from home and I am late shift tonight, which means my shift doesn't start for a couple hours. And I figured, uh, normally I do a lot of my work around the homestead at night after work is done, just seems more better for me. But I've got my morning available to me, so I figured I would do a little tour of the homestead and give you guys kind of a um, kind of where we are right now. What are we doing? So my uh, my property is a little over four acres, uh, southern Indiana. So um, we'll start with yes, right outside my back door, we live in two thousand square foot. Um, manufactured home. Uh, if we stay here long term, I'll convert it into a build a stick home at some point. But that's future plans we'll discuss in another video. But first, we go outside our back door to the right. You go about uh, 20 feet. No, my feet. That might be 30. Um, you get to our rabbit hutch, which currently we have three rabbits, two does, one buck. One of our does just recently died. Uh, one of our does uh, is nursing her babies. We have six new rabbit babies. I forget what they're called. So um, that's right outside our back door. Every morning, morning tours. You got to feed your animals. Maybe one of these mornings I'll do a morning chores routine. Usually I'm rushing through them because they're the morning chores before I start the rest of my day. So, but I try to do that. Then you get to our garage. We have a two and a half car uh, garage, extended alone. Alone standing, excuse me, I think that's what I meant to say there. And right now we've got our brooder. This is actually a rabbit hutch that we got from somebody for free. And we converted it. It's a, uh, put my coffee down. So rabbit hutch, two doors. Uh, they're connected from the inside, they're on the other side, so I'll figure I'll open it. But as you'll see, it's got two compartments. And we've got the heat lamp over the side. And right now we've got six guinea keats, three ducks, and a chicken. And a little chick uh, in there right now. The three ducks are our own ducks from our own property. Um, the guinea keats we purchased from somebody who has guinea keats. We're not too, kind of our, our guineas have been problematic. Probably another video talking about having guineas and pros and cons we found. Um, but we're hoping as we increase the flock size that they will manage their own a little better rather than we've got two that are just harassing the hell out of our chickens. But we do have ticks down here, so the guinea hens are really, really important for ticks. But here's our brooder that someone had for rabbits, and we converted it into chickens. And uh, I'm about to run by, and I'll show you guys where we've got our meat birds and our egg layers. They were all in this, con in this compartment before I rotated them out to grass. So... So we've got three chicks, or three ducks, one chick, six skinnies, and the brooder. We go out to the backyard, right out the backyard. Uh, I've got my meat tractors going. Though, technically, this these are my meat layers, and just to get them comfortable, and fed I have moved them to the uh, into my tractor for now and it's just a 4x8 and it's got 15 meat or 14 meat birds in there and a goose uh, when they get larger I've got an area in the back that I will put them on uh, and rotate them through that area but this is just to get them out of my brooder because I needed to there was too many of them but those are our Freedom Rangers we're doing Freedom Rangers not Cornish Crosses this year I've got my egg layers, and my runner ducks in here. Uh, we found a place we can get runner ducks, so we went and got five runner ducks. And my egg layers, and actually there's, I think, one or two meat birds in there. But the problem was the uh, they were too small to fit in with the big ones because they kept going out the cage. So I put them with my egg layers. And honestly, in order to just to encourage genetic diversity in our flock, we're not, um, obviously you buy the purebred. But I'm, we're not really, I don't really care about the pureness of the breeds. Um, I might take off some people with that regard, but what we will do from, uh, we might take a rooster or two from our meat birds and introduce them just because we don't have enough roosters. Uh, I'm 
hoping there'll be some roosters in that flock that we have, and that'll take care of it. That won't have to go and sacrifice the creatures, but or sacrifice my meat animals. I have a small enclosure in the back of the property right now. That's our training enclosure for our piglets. We've got two. We got hog and oats. Probably my favorite of the creatures so far. Next to Dixie is my favorite chicken. But small enclosure. That's where they they are until they're big enough for me to rotate them to my electric lined pastured fence in the back, which is 100 feet wide and 60 feet back. And I've got it split into five uh, different pastures that I'll rotate them through. So I'm waiting for them to get big enough where uh, they can't go under my electric line I ran for my pasture. So those are my pigs. So within about 50 feet, I've got all my, my birds and my pigs right now on one side. By the way, to walk the perimeter of my, around my property, it's only four acres, but um, considering I'm doing this all in one shot, because this is on my phone, you're kind of going to get some dead space of me walking around. So we get to our first of two coops here. We took a shed on the property, put some doggy doors on it. It's windy, so I need to change what I'm doing to get this to stay here. Hard to do with one hand. There we go. Okay, so my first of two coops. This has the majority of our egg layers and our guinea keen, our guinea hens are in. Um, we keep the feed in. Just open it to this side. I put in a couple roosts, roosting areas for our egg layers. I'm actually about to put in some more, but can't really see much in there. But that's our egg layers and our meat bird, our, our boxes, laying boxes are over here. I just got a table saw, so I've been working on learning how to build things, and it is quite an experience. So I'll be making, hopefully making some of this stuff on our own, uh, more customized for what we need. But that's our first of two coops. Here is our second coop. Our second coop right now, this will be where the egg layers, when I rotate them out of their confinement cage over there, I will, before I introduce them to the big flock, I will move them into this smaller flock so they have a chance to get more to size and then um, kind of get the other chickens used to them. Kind of help with the pecking order process. Right now, all that's in here is a mother hen with two chicks that she hatched. So, any luck. Like I said, I've got a good amount. I'm hoping, I only wound up with five or six chickens. I'm hoping, um, Hoping I'll have some roosters for my egg layers, but we'll see. We go for a walk. I've got my baby enclosure to cover my feed bot, my feed thing. It's watertight-ish, and you can tell from the sound we are approaching my turkey enclosures. Now I have two, basically a 30 foot by 30 foot enclosure, and then I split it in half so it's 30 by 15 on each side, and. Uh, what I do, uh, I keep my turkeys in there. One of, uh, there's the Tom, there's the Jane. The other Jane's actually sitting on some eggs over here. So, any luck, I'll have some more turkeys soon. And then I will basically just, as they beat up one part, I rotate them into the other and rotate them back and forth. Small enough amount of turkeys where I'm not really concerned for them beating up the ground too much. Uh, the eventual ending spot for my meat birds will be here and uh, this enclosed area, and I'm actually gonna further enclose it and put a center post in, but that's on my to-do list. Everything's on the to-do list right now. You can tell the storm's about to hit. My ducks, my little baby pond. I need to make an enclosure for that. We did add two beehives to our property recently. We came across some beehives for top, top post beehives, I think is what they're called. Um, there's one hive, there's another hive, and I need to enclose the hive areas, which I will eventually. Um, so it keeps my dogs away from it and everything so they don't wind up getting you know, attacked by bees. But we're not gonna we're not gonna actually try to plant the bees or get those this year we're hoping maybe we'll catch a swarm and then maintain it and then we've got our large garden area just behind it 
which I think I did the measurements. It's like 50, 75 feet by 30 feet or something like that. But, and then yesterday we planted persimmon trees and elderberry bushes and things of that nature. But that's our tour of the property and my water catchment systems coming off the roof, which I need to do some work on, but everything, everything needs to be done. Homesteading is a good life, but it's a busy life. But it's a very fulfilling busy life. I like it. So that is the tour of what's on our property currently. Uh, the four acres, we probably walked maybe an acre and a half. And uh, looking forward to uh, showing you guys further along as we grow more and we introduce the pigs to the back back area hope forward to hope post that video the next month and uh, hope we're able to be a source of inspiration and a relational knowledge I don't expect everyone to be a homesteader but you will have the ability to, to see your food and to associate develop a relationship with your food now it's not just a magic thing you get in an aisle at a store so you all have a great day. I'm going to go in and get ready for the rest of mine. Joe Bumble Naker signing off. Bye.